ambassadors are here for, give them a hand. I'm Emily Holmberg, I'm one of the ambassadors. And I am Claire Kohlberg, another Chisago Lakes ambassador. Clara Kohlberg, okay, from the Chisago City Kohlbergs. Okay. No. <laughs> and you were all just crowned now the other night? Yes. Yep. Great. Thursday night. You rode in the parade probably last night? Yep. They were in it. Yep. How exciting is it to be? It's pretty exciting. It's fun to go around and meet the community and will be you, out and about. Will you ride in other community parades? Yeah, yes. we'll be in all the community parades. Okay. And like all the volunteer, like the, all the events around. We're not just in Lindstrom. We do like Taylor's Falls and like all the way down. And now I understand they all have the same level of queenship. When I was Miss Carl Oscar Day's candidate, 1975, we had you know top Miss Queen and then first and second runner-up. So the Queen had the high spot on the float. <laughs> I think I think the purpose of that is to go away from like it being young woman butting heads. Yes. Like women your young women working together now, yeah. Because we sort of did fight a little. <laughs> Who could have that top spot? No, I'm teasing. We had a good time too. But, um, well, thank you for coming today. You're lovely girls. Thank you. How old are you, I should say that? 17. 17 and 17, okay. I'll show you a picture when I was 16. We're gonna share this with them. And my younger picture. sister. <laughs> you got my baby picture? No. <laughs> oh, that I don't know. Ultrasound. You want Ultrasound. To <laughs> Are you going to stay for the lecture? Good. Okay, have a seat. Well, did you all know that it's the 60th year of Carl Oscar Days? I hit a button. Good. Me too. I got mine right here. And my name is Sally Barrett. And I will be giving you a one-hour lecture on, oh, who, you know, who, what, when, where, how of Swedishness here in the area, and how I've learned it over the years. It's amazing. Never did I ever think Wilhelm Moberg and, and all these people that I've met since 1972 that they would be in my life, and I'm in theirs, and just forever lucky to be I was extremely blessed, I should say, to be where I was at the time of my life, the age I was, and meeting. So this is another one right here, because I've always wanted to sort of tell the story. And having Jack film it, this is great. Thank you, Jack. And uh, anybody, I want to know who came the furthest here today first, too. Who came the furthest? Name the town. Luck, Wisconsin. Luck, Wisconsin. Cumberland, Cumberland, which is further? Cumberland, Cumberland okay. Roseville, but that's not as far as Cumberland or Lund. Okay, really? Okay. I don't think. Anybody else can beat Cumberland? Roseville. Okay. I think Roseville's further. You get a bag of cookies when you leave. <laughs> the ginger snap cookies from the Lindstrom Bakery. They're back there, Bunny. It's 35 miles, so I think luck is further, right? We're from St. Peter. Oh, St. Peter, will you win? Okay, we're scratching St. Peter. St. Peter. So you guys win a bag of cookies. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, there's just so much to share with you here. I want to just get started right away and kind of work a chronological order and tell you about, you know, just the town and Moberg and everything and how this all came to be. And maybe I will have each of you take one of these two. They're sort of out of date. This is the 2019 version, but it's my Swedish Circle brochure that I've done for 26 years after our Swedish Immigration Jubilee back in 1996. So it'll fit in there, but this is what's happened to it. It's become a business card now. And you, everyone with smartphones, you point it at the QR code right there. And all the information in here pops up just like that on your smartphone. So you'll want to take one of these and 
one of these. And how many bought the county press for this week? It's got all the good Carl Oscar Day's things in it as good souvenir. And Matt Silver is the uh, editor. His father was the editor for years and years. And they, you know, the families graduated into that. And you know, it's just a fabulous uh, way to communicate. Now what I think I'm going to do is start with the year 1948 when Wilhelm Moberg, this is a picture of him, and I got this uh, in Sweden. I've been to Sweden about 14 times, and this is from what they call the Emigrant Institute. You know, we have our American Swedish Institute in St. Paul. Well, they have a museum institute at the same time over there in Veksha. Now, this is a picture of him. Maybe I can take it out so you don't see the glare on this acrylic thing. He's 50, roughly 50 years old here. And that's when he came to the Chisago Lakes area. He was inquisitive, he was an author, he was always thinking about what to write next. He wrote plays, and the Swedish people absolutely adored him. He did not agree with what the king and queen had to say for their political views, so at times there was a clash of his, his ways. But the people of Sweden just loved him. Everybody see that? So, what happens, he comes to the area and decides he's going to interview people for the emigrant books. This is the first book he writes called The Emigrants. And they have a, uh, an, uh, his whole family comes. He's thinking he needs to go to California, Texas, different places, but for sure Minnesota to interview people of, of our Swedish heritage. And he did start with over in Center City at Chisago Lake Lutheran Church, um, the big church on the hill, if you have not seen it. I, I'm a member, and we go back 1854, we were settled. And it was settled um, May 12, 1854. And then Scandia was one week later. So a very large Swedish community here of Lutheran beliefs and religion. So he came to the church and asked if he could read the records, all done in Swedish. And of course, he can read the old Swedish. So he, he was there for days and, uh, and took probably photographs of things. You never know how he. He wrote things down, and in the meantime, then, he would travel from town to town. Uh, first off, he thought he was going to be able to take the train, the 328 train. Is that right, Char, with the number, 328? Do you remember it? Anybody remember the Lindstrom? It was the number 328, I think. And from Wyoming, Minnesota, to Taylor's Falls. And it <laughs> stopped at every station at Chisago City, Lindstrom. Center City, Schaefer, Taylor's Falls, turned around, went back all day long. And I'm pretty sure it was the 328. So that year, the 328 retires. <laughs> I think this is sort of funny that, you know, he had planned to come in 48, and the train stops. So how are you going to get around? He doesn't drive. He never drove in Sweden. And he decides to ask the... Uh, uh, pharmacist in Chisago City, is there a man or anybody I can buy a bicycle from? And the pharmacist was like, okay, yeah, I've got one in the back if you just want to use mine. So that's what he did that whole summer for three months. He would bicycle from town to town. Now, when you find a 50-year-old man, I think in this area at that time when there were cars everywhere, people got a little apprehensive. Like, what's this man all about? What, why is he asking all these questions? And he's speaking Swedish to everybody. You had this apprehension of our congregation, 
of our city people, probably the police. You probably had many things questioning. Who was this Swedish man? And all he's doing is talking to everybody. Well, here's just another unbelievable fun story. Um, my mother and father got married in 1948, same year, in Schaefer. And we own this very beautiful brick house, which is now Country Bed and Breakfast. And long story short, my mother was 20, and she was working in the cities the day he came to our house. Now you're going to say, why did he come to my house? OK. The, uh, the story goes quickly. Well, when she was in 1946, she was at the Lindstrom High School football game. And there was a man there from Sweden. His name is Ivar Oman. And he ran a magazine called Volket i Bild, which means people in pictures, kind of a life magazine thing. And so he came to this area, 1946, and he wants a 100% Swedish American girl, farm girl, and she doesn't have to speak Swedish, but she's 100% Swedish. So he picks her out of a crowd like this you know, at a football game and says, I'll take, how about this one? And Bert Merling was the editor at the time of the county press. And so Bert said, yeah, that's Lois Anderson. And she's 100% Swedish. And yes, I know her family has a farm in Schaefer. And it is, this, she would be perfect. She's talented. She sings. You know, the perfect girl you're looking for. So what did he do? He picks her out. And they call my grandparents and see if this is possible to come out and meet them. And they did. And so my mother is on the cover of the 1946 Folkety Build magazine as a 16-year-old girl. Yeah, so it's quite fun. And the uh, other part, I want to just do a whole book on all this someday. But the other part that's really great is that they okay, invited Ivar Ullman to their wedding in September. And it, he says, I can't come. But I'll send a gift with a friend of mine who's coming. Well, who was that friend? Moberg. And one day, this, he, this huge sedan pulls in. My mother and grand, well, mother wasn't there. But my grandmother tells, told us the story that the uh, Two guys get out of the car, and one has a you know, gift in his hand and wrapped in paper. They come to the door, and they're asking for Lois. Well, she's not there. She's at work. So they come into the house and speaking Swedish to my grandparents. And my grandparents figured out this was sort of special, and we better have coffee because that's what they always did. And they treat that person for coffee. and good cookies. So she said during that time she was making coffee at the stove, Moberg stood in our kitchen. And we have big windows like this, like two big windows side by side. And she said he kept looking out and asking her questions about the house and about everything in her family. What, what do you recall where you came from? Well, she was a product of my great grandparents that came and settled in two harbors. And so it's just fun to know that my, great, my grandmother and grandfather were interviewed by Moberg in our house. And so some of that information was probably taken, as well as maybe interviewing your parents here in Lindstrom or Center City or the church records. And so he takes all of that, and he goes back to Sweden. But in the, like I say, in the meantime, you just have to remember all the places he interviewed for three months and staying in Chisago City at the, um, uh, just a minute, it says it on this. I think I'll read it from here. I just happened to be at the county press one day, and I found this, you know, how headlines can be. And, you, and I said, what? You know, and I look, and it says, 
August 7, 1952. The emigrant describes well the early Swede. Wilhelm Moberg, outstanding writer in Sweden, is publishing new book with local uh, locale laid in Chisago County. And you have to remember, the emigrants already came out, so people have read that. This is the new book he's talking about, Unto a Good Land, okay? But soon a new book will be off the press in Sweden, a book which has its locale laid in the community and particularly in Chisago City, the place where its author spent a summer picking up the information and getting the local color. That book, yet unnamed, is authored by Sweden's greatest literary, literary light, Wilhelm Moberg. Author Moberg has already written a book called The Immigrants, and the one to follow it will be the sequel. The first book, The Immigrants, describes the Swedish people who came here more than 100 years ago. It tells of the conditions in Sweden, the political and social problems which drove them from their homeland to take root in a new soil here in America, and particularly here in Chisago County, where they found the climate and the general typography of the land so suitable and so similar to what they had left in the old country. It has been said that those who read the immigrants will understand better the Swedes in Chisago County, all whose forebearers came from the places in the old country of which Moberg writes. Moberg's book is said to be earthy and down to the point on reality. People and conditions are described as they actually existed. Readers have talked of the book <coughs> as one of having realism and yet written in a charming fashion. During author Moberg's stay in Chisago City a few summers ago, that would be 1948, and he visited the county press office many times delving into the old files and particularly into some of the old Swedish newspapers and books from the home of Lindstrom postmaster, Paul Norelius. <coughs> Miss Norelius is back there. <laughs> okay, he frequented the municipal liquor stores. They always had to have their aperitifs, you know. He had spirited refreshments with the different characters who, and then rode a bicycle through the towns, visited farms, old Swedish pioneer landing places in Taylor's Falls and Franconia, and the local churches, villages, and farm homes, talked to folks of every type and took countless notes. He stayed at the Melander House in Chisago City, where he compiled much of his material for the books. He would come home and write at the Melander House every night, so he had fresh information. Now rated as one of the best sellers, his first book, The Emigrants, has hit sales marks of over 100,000 in Sweden. It is published in both the Swedish and English language and promises soon to be one of the best sellers in the local community where many folks await its arrival. So like I say, if you want to just see this later on, it's just that run and I was at the county press looking for something else and turning the pages and it caught my eye. So sometimes that's the best fun thing that happens that in your history and your research. Okay. Now the Melander House, let me go into that real quick. Um, how many of you remember back, probably 1970s, somebody wrote a big four by eight sign of plywood and said, Wilhelm Moberg slept here. And it was on the caboose at the park in Chisago City on Highway 8. 
Okay, anybody remember that? Vaguely. Vaguely, okay. So he's, <laughs> there were people that thought he slept in the caboose. <laughs> And there is a funny, now there's a funny story where I found out at a class reunion, one of my classmates slept in the caboose. Because <laughs> he, he wanted to be like Moberg. <laughs> so where it really was, um, if you know the town of Chisago City, you go south on Old Town Road, and just pack, past, there's a service station on your left, and then the next house is a gray house. And for years, we had that four by eight sign there, because that's the truth. Wilhelm Moberg slept there in that summer. But the people that have currently moved there took it down. <laughs> they didn't want to be there. But if you actually want to see the house address and drive by, I do have it here on the Swedish Circle information <laughs> on Chisago City. So. This is, this is coming up here, too. But uh, yeah, so now we're still at 1948. We brought ourselves to 1952 with that. And the books are published. And Moberg also became very good friends with Ted Norelius, uh, the author or the editor of Chisago County Press at that time. And they were, um, like I say, it almost seemed like one and the same. They were my cousin Carl Werner. Peterson was a pilot in Sweden. And there's 1972 where we're at here, too. When I said this just fell out of the book, I was amazed because my mother saved it. That was my first trip to Sweden. And I was 16. So this little article is about our family trip with my mother and father, my younger sister, Kay. So we go with this plane full of people from uh, the whole area here. If you know Helen Fosdick and her daughter Tori and the Carlson family from Center City, it was, it was just too fun. And uh, plane loads through the American Swedish Institute. I remember my, my dad saying, we're going because the price is right. <laughs> Guess how much we paid for a round trip in three weeks in Sweden. I mean, we just we stayed with the relatives, of course. $200, $235 a person through SAS. I mean, I just crack up when I think, look at that for a round trip ticket. So here's a picture of us at Carl's farm. And he lived with his mother, Signe. And then his family was there. And a picture of my mom and dad and Kay and I with our long hair parted down the middle. You know how that 70s look was. And so we're in Sweden for three weeks. And Carl also knew Moberg. And he knew Ted Norelius from the time that he came. In 1972, he came to find all of us here. He didn't know if he'd find anyone. And after four days being here, he found at least 250 relatives. <laughs> And we were, he stayed with us at our, what we lovingly call the farm, you know. And then the next year, he says, I want you to be the first to come back to Sweden. And his mother even kind of said, you know, wow, this is, ex this is just extremely rare, you know, for us to get together. And my great-grandmother in 1972 lived in Sunrise. And when he went to finally visit her, you know, she's opening the door and standing there, and he says who he is, and, you know, we're relatives. And she says, well, what took you so long <laughs> <laughs> to come back and find all of us? Yeah, so he really had some great times coming to and fro and um, having that pilot thing. And, his, you know, he could fly any time and come over here. So as you see here, Moberg creates fictitious characters. They're not real. They're based on the real people that he interviewed. It could have been my grandparents. It could have been my mother, you know, if, if that's who he interviewed, or somebody at the church. And he creates these characters of strength, being able to go through the hardships that they went through to come 
to America. And so how many have read the books right now? I'd be interested to hear. Good, good. Well, in Sweden, too, the, it's a um, set uh, curriculum in their schools. In high school, eighth grade, they have to read this series of books and understand it. So. Yes, and it's now starting here. Thank you, Char. Yes, so we can now have a connection. And young ladies, did you hear about it in school at all? Yeah, see, some classes don't hear. They have not. So I hope to get it, yeah, that it's a set curriculum in history. that They have to read this and understand. Chisago Lakes is just famous in Sweden. So in Taylor's Falls, they're crying when they're in Taylor's Falls. The people that I tour with and, and seeing our church in Center City, there's just certain places they, they get so emotional coming here. So knowing that and how all these things come together with Moberg, you know, taking fictitious characters, but based on the real people that left Sweden, now I'm going to go into that. It was from Hasala, Sweden. How many have seen the sister city signs like Lindstrom here? Yeah, that's part of the project here to get every town a sister city. Tingsrud is for Lindstrom, but Center City and Center City Church are Hasala. Now the people that came and settled our church are the uh, true Carl Oscar and Christina. If you look at it, this how I see it, and when I've been there, these people have the history and the records to show that Moberg would have read their records also, but Moberg placed them in Småland, which is southern Sweden, and Hasala is up in the northern one-third of Sweden. But these people, their names are Pear, which means Peter in Swedish. Joris Pella is another way to say it. And then it was Pear Anderson. Okay, now it's all coming back here. Thank you, Keith. <laughs> and uh, the story of that area with Joris Pella coming, Pear Anderson, same guy, bringing 100 people from there in 1850, they leave from the port city of Yavla. And they come down and go around and hit the Pacific and a three month journey out to uh, New York and then eventually up here. But they only have 16 people that from that 100 that come and successfully stay. Some decided to stay in New York. Some stay in Chicago. Some stay in another. Uh, I hate to say the word cult, but it was a bunch of people that in Illinois enticed people to come and stay there. And then there was a man up here in Center City, um, it was Eric Norberg, and he writes to them and says, I already have a place for you to come. It's up here in Chisago County, and it's called you know, Chisago Lake. This whole area was just called Chisago Lake at the time. And Mr. Norberg is like, you need to come here. And it's much like Sweden, you know. So they pack up and come up here. And a few more hardships, but they get here. Coming up the St. Croix River. And, you know, just like the story goes, and I don't want to spoil it for anybody, so we're going to kind of keep that vague. <laughs> and the... Uh, coming up the St. Croix River and landing in Taylor's Falls and then having the connections with pioneers here and they go seven miles west, where? Here, to our Chisago Lake. So it's a great um, connection of Moberg reading our book, reading our facts and our church histories and different histories, putting it together. But remember, it's really Pear Anderson from Hasala. So in 19 or two, in the year 2000, we did a sister um, exchange, a tour and return tour back and forth with some people from this area 
we all flew over, went to Hasala, and saw other parts of Sweden too. But we created the sister city there, and then they brought a plane load here two, three weeks later. A yeah, very fun um, connection between Hasala, and I have a lot of good friends there. I know Keith has been there too, and, and done a lot of good connections in our sister city, uh, all the connections we have so far. The towns are related through this brochure on this logo. It's to represent the eight towns that are in here from the Swedish Jubilee year. So I'm going to jump up a little bit here because you now know there's you know books from Moberg. Moberg gathers information. But what happens then, we have this call from the American Swedish Institute and in 1996, it's Bruce Karstadt from the Institute asking if the king and queen of Sweden can come for a visit to the Karl Oskar house, which was saved by then in 1996. But we started in 1995 with the house being in very rough shape, and it was seen by Moberg in 1948. He bicycled by the Gladder Cemetery Road, if you know where that is, and just south of Lindstrom here. And once again, it's on, the map is in here and things. So um, the Moberg's, uh, Mr. Moberg saw it all dilapidated and said basically that's the Carl Oscar Nia Duvamola which is what he called it. And Nia means new in Swedish. Duva Mola means new, well, dove's home. So the whole translation is new dove's home. And just another caveat there, back in Sweden, they named their farms. And Christina's home was um, Duva Mola. So that's what was a love of hers. And his was Corpamon. So they dated back then, you know, of course, fell in love. And so what happens when they get here, this is the third house as they age. And Carl Oscar, after they build it, he, he lovingly says, this is your Nia Duvamola, Christina. And because she's always in the story, you're going to feel the hardships they've gone through. You're going to feel the love of Sweden from both of them, but especially her, that she's heartsick. And the statue over here in Lindstrom at the county press is the one of Carl Oscar and Christina. And the real statues across the road, close to the chiropractic office, is Daniel Lindstrom, Per Anderson, and Eric Norelius the real people that came from Hasala. So you've got a, a connection of the new and the old. So the, um, the house is lovingly fixed up in 1994 and 95 by our Lindstrom Historical Society. We started a special society just to take in all the funding that people gave and we saved it, okay? And then they heard about it in Sweden through my cousin, Carl Werner, because he did a lot of work getting the press releases and PR going. And he even brought over a large boulder that you'll see there at that location um, from his home farm in Oseda. So there's just so many wonderful things I can say that he did and little bits that's more that's going to be in my book. But the whole 1996 year was a year of fun and jubilee. And we decided to take um, all that information, Barb Young and myself were co-chairmen, and create this brochure. Because it, it was that, here we had all this wonderful information from every town. And it was like, now what are we going to do with it? Now we're going to have to. I don't know, let's do a brochure. And so you can find every town in here, what there's to do. 
North Branch, Alma Lund, Taylors Falls, Schaefer, Scandia, uh, Lindstrom, Chisago City. And a little map in the center, but um, then the information about the king and queen coming also. And then after the king and queen, we got a call again that Benny Anderson and Bjorn Oveus from ABBA, the former ABBA group, want to come and bring a beautiful musical they have created called Christina. Now it's just a, you know, one more thing we can't believe and that happened. So at Orchestra Hall on um, October 1996, we listened to them there. And then the second night they were at the high school here in Lindstrom in the gymnasium for the second concert. How many were at that? Yeah, it was just wonderful, wasn't it? I mean, just the music is so, so beautiful. And I, I, I know Benny and Bjorn now from those times. I, I want to call them and, and you know, I can connect them through their management. And I just want to say, you still need to bring that here and into America, because it's all about immigration. So immigration, you know, from way back and Moberg. And then, of course, their musical is based on the books, but it's more in Christina's version of how she felt in her homesickness. Now, going back to the Carl Oscar statue, how many know what year it was in the parade? What year was it created? And by who? Anybody? Keith knows. Seventy-two, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So Willard Willard Smith, the owner of Plastic Products, now moved to well, they met back to their old location near the Catholic Church, and Willard had this idea, and he wanted to have a recreation of the statue of Carl Oscar and Christina. And he connects with a, a man in St. Paul who is the artist and tells him he doesn't want a bronze statue. He wants a plastic one that looks like bronze or copper, or whatever. So yes, this, this man came up here and saw the statue. And the Swedes always kind of joke because it's a little more stout than the real one in Karlsham Harbor. And that one is, you know, leaner, Carl Oscar and Christina. But it's still the same. Carl Oscar's looking forward to going to America. And what's Christina doing? Looking over her shoulder to Sweden and the homeland. So that's her heart sickness that she will never, ever lose. That's part of this story. And it's touching, very touching. And then. So Willard had it made for the plastic products float for Carl Oscar days. And it ran, I would say, from 68, Keith, something like that. And the girls, like I said, when you were queen candidates, the queen rode up on the top with Carl Oscar and Christina. And then the attendants were next to that. And boy, that was so cool to ride the parade, the Carl Oscar Day Parade. And then, so what happens in 72, you're absolutely right, they take that away. Maybe the float wasn't too safe or something. And they put it on the pedestal down at the county press. And now, too, in the county press, this is just another caveat, the desk that Moberg used while he was here, helping Ted Norelius or writing articles of he needed space, and he, the desk he used has been in that building all these years. So they've pulled it aside now. And he, they put pictures and an old typewriter. It's very cute to you know, make yourself go in there and see that too, the history, feeling you know, his presence. So um, next we're going up to, like I said, come back to 1996 and the Jubilee year, saving the Carl Oscar house. Um, 
the big one, that was the big one, really. And having tourism just come for many things, well, the big, big was the king and queen of Sweden and Benny and Bjorn and everything like that, just in disbelief. Um, but we visited so many places. And then what happened, too, um, Marlene Smith was Smitty's secretary. And they fell in love, get married, and Smitty dies. And with permission from our church in Center City, he is buried at Gladder Cemetery next to the Karl Hosker House. Now, this is a very old cemetery of, of Swedish immigrants that died, you know, first. And it was also a place that they thought they were going to put the very first church. But the church in Center City location won out as the place to be. And after Smitty died and he's buried there, Marlene takes over the company and she's making growth happen. They, I think they're in four states in southern uh, USA and it's just very productive. They make plastic products for many different things. So Marlene has passed away. We also decided to do a statue of her and that's next to the Gustafs building in Lindstrom by the Holiday Station. If you see her, she's going like this, because it was always kind of a mannerism she'd have, and maybe thinking about this or that, and she'd do that. <laughs> so look for that bronze statue. All the statues and one more were done by uh, Ian Dudley here in Lindstrom. Um, we'll start with all of them. The Moberg statue in Chisago City, and then we went on to the, I think it was the Nellie Gustafson one next. And then the Per Anderson, Daniel Lindstrom, Eric Norelius. So Ian, then he says, I want to do one of Marlene. So he's been a very, very instrumental part of our community and getting these beautiful bronze statues made. Um, and then Marlene back in 19, let's see. The coffee pot water tower. Everybody's seen that, right? Huh? In Lindstrom downtown. It was on it was the 1908 wood water tower converted to a Swedish coffee pot in 1992. She spent eighteen thousand six hundred and fifty dollars to have it done and donated it from plastic products. And on the side it says Valkomen to Lindstrom. And I always like to add, where the coffee's always on. So <laughs> you can go to the Swedish Inn. You can go to our coffee roast, the roastery. Lots of good coffee around here. But um, yeah, Marlene's statue was 2016. Yeah, across from the Gustafs Gallery brick house. And then I just want to also add a tribute to Helen Fosdick, who helped start the Jubilee year. When she came to me and she said, I'm too old to do this, and the people had first connected with her. I don't know how old she would have been in 1996. Somebody figure it out. She'd be 99. She'll be 99 in a month. So, nine, you know, somebody do the math here for me because she came to me, and that was 1995, and she says, You have to be the one to take on this Jubilee. I can't do it. And I was like, okay, well, I love event planning and all that stuff, like breathing air, you know, for me. So I took it on, or she says, you're going to be the spark that lights the flame. And I said, what? <laughs> I mean, that took, you know, a lot of, uh, I felt the feeling as she said it. It was like she was passing a torch of Swedish local history to me, like, don't drop the torch. So... I still talk to her. She's just in, I wish we could have Zoomed her here today. That would have been fun. But Helen lived in Lindstrom for years and brought in the Kichisaga Swedish Club with Pastor Almquist at our church. And they had been also very instrumental in saving the Carl Oscar House. Many things came together that 96 year. We were, we were one team really working together. And you know, I'm very proud of that, that this, this brochure happened after that. And also, here's, 
This is a part of the big part. We gave this painting to the king and queen of Sweden. And it's called Currents of Change, done by uh, Mary Pettis from Taylor's Falls. If you go on the Taylor's Falls boat ride, you'll see this uh, exact rock formation. And it's a cross on the rocks. And just when the light hits it perfectly, you'll see it. And it was the whole, the, uh, excuse me, the river was called Holy Cross in French. St. Croix means Holy Cross. So the French Canadian trappers named it St. Croix. And that, tr that translates into Holy Cross. Now, Mary, like I said, this is a large painting that we gave to the king and queen. It's now hanging in the queen's castle in Stockholm. And the uh, painting represents the Swedish people just landing. And she called it like the real life Per Anderson and his family at the lower landing. Or it could be Carl Oscar and Christina once again. So I don't know if you ever had this, but once in a while we still have more of these pop up at events. And so what today now I want you to do is just come up and look at some of this. But these were the books given to my parents, our family, in 1972 from Carl Werner. And I just grabbed them off the shelf today at home. And here's the inscription. Uh, Moberg says, to all my relatives in the United States and to the translator of this book, Gustav Langstock from Sweden. And then Carl wrote in here, and especially to the Barrett family, this is the beginning of our history, yours and ours. Have an early touch of Smoland here. Have a real, we'll have a real one next summer. And to all the best of everything from Carl Werner, November 1972. So like I said, this was July 1973 when we were all there. And the article's in Swedish about our visit. It feels like yesterday I was just sitting there having my picture taken. And I just turned 65. Uh -huh. Question. I hope I don't put you on the spot. No. And there are two other books in the series. Yeah. Moberg. I don't know what you, uh, you know, how much you know about them or comment on the relevance to our history here. Yeah, um, like I said, one more time, I don't want to spoil anything. They're called The Last Letter Home. Let's see, Unto a Good Land, The Settlers, and then I, th I know it's also considered part of the series. It's part of the series, okay? Have you read them? No, I haven't. I just... Google, yeah. Basically, right. You know, the settlers covers uh, Arvid and somebody's uh, uh, going west to California. Yeah. And, Robert. Uh, Robert and Arvid. Robert yeah. And, and, and that's um, very important. Yeah. The last letter home dealing with the uh, Civil War and the Sioux uh, outbreak. Uh, uprising. Yep. Uprising, yeah. yeah. No, I believe he. He also had a love for the Indian knowledge. Um, I don't know if you know this about our area, but the Ojibwa tribe helped save the lives of many settlers this way. And Ojibwa were known as the Chippewa. You hear the same thing. If I say Kichisaga, Kichisaga, that's the Ojibwa name for Shisaga. Shisaga City, it was supposed to be Shisaga City. So a typo happened, and the O became the A. And the girl, or whoever it was, I don't want to blame a woman, but it became a typo of they thought it should be like Chicago and Chisago City. But it was supposed to be Chisaga. And Kichisaga is how you'd say it in Ojibwa. Now, the, um, uh, the other term of, okay, where was I going? Just a sec, it'll come back. But, um, oh, the Ojibwa tribe, very friendly. And, you know, this, our weather is totally different from Sweden. And in the winters, many people died here because they didn't, they didn't understand how to stay warm. 
So the Ojibwa told them about the buffalo and this and that and how to be more, um, you know, be more aware of this cold weather can come and kill you. So they did that. They befriended them with food and how to do things to stay alive. And the um, Sioux uprising happened with all those treaties coming in. And they came north to about, I'd say, you know, to our area here. And they were looking for more settlers to kill. And out west more, wasn't it? Say that again, Char? A west war, it was sort of down in that, you know. But New Ulm and North. Yes, and they came north of New Ulm and Mankato up this way. And they were looking for more settlers to keep murdering and, you know, clean it out. This, is our, this was their land. They didn't like that we were taking over. And so what happens, they um, get here and the people are, the Ojibwa tribe is telling them, no, there's no more white people here. Go, go away. And so, you know, that's part of Moberg's knowledge. Um, I know that he, I know for a fact, he probably had a good relationship with understanding the Indian tribe and he wanted to put them in a good light. Um, and maybe this also will help you understand. When I was at the American Swedish Institute um, or the, uh, the Emigrant Institute in Veksha. 1998, I won a, scol a scholarship to go over there. And I was there for three months. And I got to see so much about Moberg and Moberg's family and knowing them just by having all this celebration in 96. Once again, you know, just blessed me with things that I'll, it's up here and I got to sit and type a book, you know, and have it all come out. But the um, people over there showed me the museum that they created that would be Moberg's writing cabin, where Moberg wrote these books out in his home pasture, okay? Just like any farmer, you have a pasture. And the daughters were here for the Moberg uh, celebration and the statue raising and, and dedication in 1996. They invited me to come to that summer home and to the writing cabin out in the pastures. And they told me how it all went, that Marianne was a typist and she'd sit there and type while Wilhelm walked back and forth with ideas and dictating to her. So she'd be just typing on a little table, and she said a cow would walk by or something. <laughs> and it's just, it was absolutely the most beautiful place, and this little cabin was then reconstructed in Veksha in the museum. And all his writings, his first manuscripts, all this stuff you see, and it's like, wow. But then we were also in the real cabin, <clears throat> wow, you know. And that summer again, 1998 is a summer I'll never forget. And I have so much more to tell. So maybe we do part two next year. <laughs> but the, uh, what happens there is that I'm going back to that room. You walked in at the museum and here's this lovely, lovely, large picture like this of the old man of the Dells. How many have seen that? In black and white, you know, you go on the Taylor's Falls boat and there's a postcard there you can buy of the old man of the Dells. That's what I've known it called all my life. Well, I, I get up to the paint, to the print, and it's just the most beautiful. It's old camera, you can tell. It's not just a snapshot. This was taken when Moberg visited. And a little typed piece of paper down here, the caption, you know, from his typewriter. It was an old typewriter. And it says, I'm expecting it to say, Taylor's Falls, Minnesota, the old man of the Dells. Now this is what tells me he had a connection with the Indian. 
It says, the old Indian chief mourning the loss of his land. Yeah, and that's how I see it too. That, you know, we took the land away from the Indians. I think it's a very, it was a strong statement. I, and I took a picture of it, but of course my camera didn't, you know, grab everything. But, and I went again in 19, well, just 2018. And now the painting was down. I'm sure they're rotating things in that room for the museum. But I asked the people there if they had seen it and one man had, so. I'm glad it's still there. I'm sure Moberg took a picture of it, I mean, you know, and then bringing the Indians in, like you just said, in the Settlers and, and in the Christina musical, let me tell you. Remember, um, Carol was there too. I'm trying to look around the room. We cried almost the whole time for this musical, right? It was so beautiful. And the music alone and the stars, and, but in this one part, there's an Indian chief all in his dress and feathers and going around and ah, yeah, 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 you know, all this, like he's fighting off the spirits of maybe the old American people here, you know, taking the land away, but also showing a kind of a love for the immigrants. It was, that's how I took it. How did you take that part? I wish I could remember as well as don't you? Oh, man, it was so effective to me. So um, just remember when you're reading that, Moberg wanted you to feel in touch with the Indians, how much they helped Carl Oscar, Christina, but I think how wrong we did them because he had a real heart for them. And uh, so then I'm going to stop there and say with the settlers and, well, uh, Robert and his friend Arvid, that's a real um, sad story too, but you have to read it. It's, it's so sad and how um, Arvid is the dreamer in the books and he's Carl Oscar's younger brother. So when they first come to him, oh, excuse me, Robert and, um, Robert is the younger brother of Carl Oscar, and Arvid is his friend. So what do they want to do? They want to go to America, and it's a real, let's go to America, boom, everybody, and find our wealth. And uh, they decide to go to California. So I'll just leave it like that for their little, their um, voyage to California. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. The Jubilee that we did was to celebrate the, nine, the 150th anniversary of the mass migration from Sweden to America. The mass migration that left in 19, 1846 to 1996. They celebrated their 150th year in Sweden. And then we did all this over here, like I say, and then what we did reached Sweden and back and forth and it was so much fun. Now we have Carla Norelius here. I want her to stand up, and wave, and just say. Oh, you found more? Yeah. Okay, good. Good, but Carla's now the president of the uh, Friends of the Carl Oscar House, which is, has changed the names too, okay? And you're the president and the CEO kind of? President. You're just president, okay. <laughs> but if you want to join that, it's you know going through Carla. She probably has some forms here today. I didn't bring them oh, the lot, okay. Well, your number's, on, your number's on this one, under Carl Oscar House. I want to just double check here. But it's um, Friends of the Carl Oscar House at gmail.com. Right. And then there's also a website, friendscarlosker.org. Under Lindstrom, you'd look under Nia Duvamola, 
And then just let me shout out a number, uh, 253 3373. That's you, that's you, yep, the first number here. So you could connect there with friends of the Carl Oscar House. It's just a great connection, once again, with our area, helping to support the Carl Oscar House and keep and more brochures and everything. And then we do, I want to do more questions now. I think I'm at that point bringing us up to kind of the end of it. And if I decide to do part two next year, we could. Yeah. Uh, no doubt, Moberg wrote the majority of the material uh, in that environment you described. But I've also heard that he retreated to Carmel, California initially mm -hmm. to, to write, start writing the books. Yep. Is that true? I've heard that too. Carl Warner would tell us that, that Carmel was a very important place for him to go to, and relatives were there. Okay, I was just going to ask. Yeah, why. yeah. And then it's sunny. They love the sunshine. The Swedes yeah. love the sunshine. And even um, here's what happened, oh gosh, three years ago now? Let me think. The Wilhelm Mulberg. Um, Nieces and nephews came to this area. They saw the Carl Oscar house. Do you have the date exactly? In the, well, what the grandparents it was all, yeah, the grandchildren. And we toured around with a nice bus and we saw everything. And it was so much fun. But to have, they stayed at my place too. And uh, an older gentleman that has now passed on. But you know, it was just fun to talk to real living relatives of. Mr. Moberg, and yeah, they were from Michigan, South Carolina, Florida, and just a great group of like 18 relatives deciding to come up and be part of all of this. Just after Carl Oscar days, though, they miss it. Yeah, I have another one. Uh, I heard, at least what I understand of it, is that Moberg was the youngest or most of the youngest of many siblings that came to the United States and he, in essence, was left behind with the mother. Is that truth to that? Now, really, where'd you hear that that's, one? That's why he was so curious about the subject, was he wanted to find out why the sibling came. I, no, I've never heard that one. Okay, Keith? The story there is his mother, Mulberg's mother, one of seven children, the only child That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Even northern Sweden, I think, were harder than northern, you know. Yeah. Another question? I wondered, um, on one of your trips to Sweden, whether you ever had the opportunity to see a play that won all these theater prizes in 2006 that was based on those guys' books, but rewritten, um, still called The Emigrants to Sanjana, um, to talk about all of the immigrants who come from outside of Western Europe to Sweden. Right? Yeah. Really? Um, migrants to Sweden and the reasons they came and the hardships they faced and being in the backs of trucks and all of that. And I wondered if you'd had a chance to see it or had heard about that. No, but 96. Really yeah, 96 I was there and they had a play in Veksha that he had written. And we saw that, which was Mans Kvina. Mm -hmm. Mans Kvina. Now, I'd love for that to come over here and just be at smaller theaters or just for Carl Oscar days again, if you could get the troupe to come and do it in English. And you know, I, and that, I'm just getting ideas as I sit up here. 
the man that we met when I was 16, who ran the Immigrant Institute all of these years, he just retired, Ulf Bebam, and he's still active, 90 something, and I mean, if he'd fly over one more trip here, and we do a Ulf Bebam lecture next year, that's when you're gonna hear massive amounts of great information from him. He's a historian and he ran the museum and you know, just I learned so much from him. Little did I know, just osmosis, you know, being in the same room with him, you you just get it. And he's written a number of books. Um, did you meet him, Keith? Ulf Bebam? Uh, my fiance was first. Yeah, when you were mayor, why don't you stand up and just give a quick what you did when you were mayor? <laughs> no, come on now. <laughs> Yes, when you, you made it meld at Tingsruth, you we melded that together. Right yeah. No, we don't have a Taylor's Falls sister we'll city yet. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, no, nobly. It's Schaefer. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we visited all these sister cities, and Sally set the trip up so the streets thought that it was a big deal. Not <laughs> Mayor of Lindstrom's coming. Well, anyway, you did a great job. Yeah. Mike. It was, it was, it was very nice. Yeah, I have to really give credit where it's due. Carl Werner Peterson, my cousin. You know, none of this would have started if I, if he didn't come drive through Linster one day and he found Jimmy Turner at the post office and Jimmy took him up to see um, 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 relatives north of here. Uh, the, the, well, not Estratel yet, he thought. Yeah, the Nardine side with, um, Magnuson, Hazel Magnuson, he thought was this picture he had. And he's ready to just say, you know, you're my cousin. And she said, no, that's Esther Tell, that's my cousin. And she's in North Branch. So off they went to North Branch and then they met Esther. Yeah, it was a wonderful, wonderful connection. And, you know, so meaningful. I'm trying to keep in touch. I promised him before he died that I would keep this going and with his children. He's got a boy and a girl there now, approaching 50, you know? And I'm like, they, they need to get a little bit more of a handle on this because they're dropping the, they're dropping it right now. And I, I've kind of been on them to, come on, Carl, your dad wouldn't be happy, you know? We, we've got to promise them that we're gonna keep this going. And, uh, okay, now it's question and answer time. Huh? Anybody? Those are books for sale? No, no. Those are. <laughs> yes, you can buy them in Lindstrom here at Gustav's. And they won't look like these covers. Um, these covers have. Uh, this is by the movie also, Jan Troel. So these are uh, basically six hour movie together. You can buy and watch the movies if you're not a book reader but it was Max Moncido and Liev Ullman that played Christina. And they were wonderful in their acting roles of the movie. Um, Jan Troel came here for lunch with Helen Fosdick in Lindstrom. And then she called me, so I got up to the dinner bell quick before. You know, we, we, ate, we ate with Jan Troel and uh, all those good connections too. So the man that made the movie I got to meet. Um, Oh gosh. The History Center sells the books too. Who does? The History Center. Oh right, thank you. Uh, sir, the History Center, the History Center on Main Street, the History Center on Main Street also sells the books. They're not Sometimes inexpensive. They abuse <laughs> Pardon? Sometimes they have used Oh good. Uh, well, Mulberg 
one specifically that picks Terrace Falls as the portal that most people came up the river. Uh, I've recently come to realize that Franconia was a very important portal as well. Mm -hmm. And while you know, Terrace Falls is fine in the book, and I know people came to Terrace Falls, uh, what do people think about the idea that Franconia was really the portal where most of them Yes, it, the, that's absolutely right. Franconia was supposed to be the mega place that the emigrants landed at. Yes. The first landing, when you go on the boat trip, they take you down to Franconia, and now they're turning around there and come back. But Franconia was, it's technically not a ghost town, but uh, the, here's why. The train was supposed to come through Franconia when it first was set up. Chisago City, Lindstrom, Center City, Franconia, and then Taylor's Falls. But with all the cliffs and the heights of different things, they said no, and people in Schaefer were, I think, a little richer, or something happened that they, they got the tug to stay here up on these lands instead of going down so soon, and Schaefer won out as the depot. And, and when they lost Franconia, they, they, they were prepared with like eight motels. Everything was ready down in Franconia. And grocery stores and just places. It was supposed to be a successful town right on the river. And it just didn't, it all closed up. They brought many of those buildings up to Schaefer and to Taylor's Falls, up that hill, if you know the hill. And I don't know. What I'm talking about is the earlier years before the river, Visual emigration is depicted in the books. Yeah. They walk through the woods. And True. The yeah, they walk through the woods of Franconia to Taylor's Falls. And I mean, it, well, what I'm saying is the waters are calmer now in Franconia. And if they came into Franconia as the primary portal and then made their way to the west, that would have been much easier. But he wrote it as, well, you, wrote it, you know, I, that's why I said you're absolutely right. But I yeah, and what's real too, there was a swamp in Schaefer. When they hit Schaefer, yeah. they actually had to go south of Schaefer and around again to get back up on 310th, if you know the roads now. And now it goes straight. When I take my tour, I can go straight from Center City to Taylor's Falls. But back then, you, as the wagons would have sunk in this swamp, they had to go way around. So everything's not true, true in the books. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Taylor's Falls was. Taylor's Falls was established 1837, 1837 by the English, and they employed the Norwegians and Swedes and all the people coming over as the lumberjacks to cut down all the trees. This was clear cut, you know, and it was crazy. But all that um, lumber was how the lumbermen got rich and sent it down river to Stillwater. And I mean, that could be a whole story that way, too. But everything, how Moberg saw it, you know, he created a great story, I think, of the hardships they had to go through. First, the three months of coming here. and. <laughs> on a ship. Do you know the magazine American Experiment? It's printed in Minneapolis. They have an article this time on the Sioux Uprising, oh. the truth of the story. Really? Not, not, oh, that's not neat. Really American true. Experiment it's magazine, she said, it has the because of Sioux the, Uprising. The inches in the book of the sun being there and seeing the uprising in Philma, that's included. Mm. And that sort of stuff is included in this article for the American okay. Experiment. Okay, American Experiment magazine. Okay, or I think we're going to end. And I thank you all for coming. It's fun. Thank you, Sally. Yes. Thank you.